Zinc is really interesting for us. It's a really interesting product. And, um, you know, it, it's a culmination of a lot of changes that have happened in our organization over the last six months, actually. You know, we merged with 24-7. That was very successful for us, brought a lot of the engineering resource um, much closer to the Zaxxas business and to our product teams. Uh, we obviously acquired a business called Banner Connect. They're a company that was, uh, was already working with our business in the Netherlands extensively. Um, and you know, through those uh, through those mergers and through those acquisitions, we've um, managed to strengthen our product development capability and have a really renewed focus on that. And I think one of the first really exciting products that came out of that process was Zaxxas Sync, uh, which is a very simple pro product actually. Uh, we work with partners who are able to identify and tell us when one of our clients' ads is on TV, um, and then when we get that signal from them we are able to immediately buy every ad impression on every Wi-Fi connected device for a period of one minute, two minutes, five minutes. It really depends on the campaign objectives. So what that means is you know, we have a lot of research that tells us that, of course, rather than going to make a cup of tea, which is what used to happen during the ad breaks, now people are picking up their iPads or their, you know, their mobile phones or whatever it happens to be. Um, so we're replacing the lost GRPs from the TV by putting them on the mobile device and synchronizing the two. The data point is the fact that the ad is on TV. So sometimes we may do a, a, an, an audience overlay over the top of it, but actually usually not, because uh, the, the, the core thing is about making sure that the ad is on at the same time as the TV commercial. Um, and you're right in the sense that just because the ad's on TV doesn't mean that the person is actually watching that channel or, or even watching TV at all. So there's a level of, you know, of waste associated with that. But the ad's still there. You know, so we find there's a huge performance uplift from the small part that was actually watching the TV, and that makes the whole campaign worthwhile. We've had a huge amount of interest for it. You know, it, it started out as a product in the Netherlands, very successful one there. You know, the agencies really liked it. We had lots of clients very involved or very interested. Um, and then, you know, a few of our other markets started picking up on it. And now it's it's a big global product launch for us. We have it launched in the in the US. I think it's I think I'm right in saying it's the first product that originated out of Europe that has been launched in the US. Uh, it's very successful. You know, clients really like it. Clients like the idea of that as an innovative product, um, and it works very well. So, you know, it's it's very exciting for us. Khan is always a really interesting opportunity for um, our industry to get together. Mm. I think you know, there's a couple of opportunities a year, I suppose. CES, Khan. Um, I think what what I like about Khan is it does have a very European flavour to it. Uh, obviously, a lot of the big American companies are there, but so are a lot of the European companies, and I think. You know, it's it's a it's a very valuable opportunity for the publishers, for the technology companies to get together in a in a in an interesting environment. Um, and I think, you know, the 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 there's an interesting dynamic in Cannes because, of course, it's a creative festival. You know, ultimately and primarily, it's a festival that that celebrates creativity in our industry. Um, and ad tech, the whole ad tech industry and space, currently sort of exists around the periphery of that core. That, 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 that sort of that core conference. Um, um, and it's interesting to see how that's, how that's changing and how that's going to continue to change. You know, how the ad tech industry actually starts to play more of a role within the actual festival of creativity itself. You know, how can we think about what the ad tech industry is doing in a, with more of that creative lens? You know, for example, how are we bringing creative into our space? You know, using the opportunities that technology creates for creative sequencing, for storytelling, for the kind of stuff which is the core of that conference. You know, how are we doing that? Another one, the creative use of data, the creative uh, display of data, you know, the, uh, the creative use of technology. You know, there's a lot of really interesting things that are happening within the technology industry which actually are very creative. And ultimately, the product that we are all part of and are involved in is still advertising, which is a very creative product in its own. Right. So. You know, I think the two are, are coming closer together, and as the ad tech industry's sort of involvement in the festival grows and grows, I think there are really interesting opportunities for that to become, you know, much more integrated. And I think over the next few years, we're going to see that much more. You know, I think there'll be more ad tech type content um, within the main festival. Um, I think they will start to create awards. My, my hope is that they start to create awards um, for um, for some of this creative use of technology, creative application of data, etc. You know, something that recognizes the role that our part of the industry plays in the creative process. The video is obviously already huge. Right? Uh, you know, half our business in Europe is now video. That's access.
um, that it was in 2013, and that's a trend that we'll, we'll continue to see in 2014 for sure. Um, you know, video is a format that a lot of our clients are interested in using to target their audiences. Um, and, and so I think the, you know, the, 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 the video space will continue to grow. And you know, as we've seen with our sync product, using interesting new types of data to connect TV and, and, and online, uh, online campaigns, but also using um, other audience data. Like in Germany, for example, we work with AGF, um, uh, who you know, we were able to look at high and low viewing households and target video into low viewing households to, in to, to provide very cost effective reach. Um, you know, so there are lots of ways that we can connect the data sets, which we're already doing. Um, I think the next thing then is, you know, what about the actual TV? You know, the, I think right now most of what we're doing is still very much on, you know, devices rather than on the on the on the, the, the set in the in the home. Um, and I think there are some really interesting things happening in markets like the UK. What Sky's doing with AdSmart and 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 other things like that. Um, uh, I think there are challenges though. You know, I think a lot of it is, th there are some very deeply ingrained industry structures which will make that, um, you know, which, w which make planning that kind of experience very difficult, you know. Um, so I think we're some way off that being widely distributed and widely adopted. And I think our industry is nowhere near yet sort of ha having really understood what's, what are the planning processes, the planning frameworks to actually m scale that kind of, an, uh, kind of a, an investment in TV advertising. Um, so the opportunities are there. The futures, I, th I don't know who said it, the futures are already here. It's just not widely distributed yet. You know, I think it's the question is how will that be distributed in, in, in Europe? You know, lots of different markets, lots of different publishers, you know, big stations with you know, big sales houses. And it's, it'll be interesting to see how that evolves.